powers of doom. Method with the choice. Method with TOD as the choice. Okay, so Method currently with towers of doom. Uh, they... Huh. Do we have... I'm actually interesting. Our bands were Sky Temple and Vaskaya. I could have seen them uh, bring them to Infernal. They played Infernal a lot, and I really expected that they would try to do that. So for a moment, I was really thinking, well, did they ban Infernal out? Uh, no, they didn't. So we have seen Method on the map before on Towers. They have uh, they have two maps played, and they have won one of them. They lost the other. So Towers is still a fair map for them, but usually they are more. Well, they, see, they seem to be more comfortable on Infernal. Then again, Towers is better for Tracer. Yes. Tracer there, Ginji, even if we wanted to go back to her, it's been a while since we've had the Ginji. I am pretty sure that if Leftovers doesn't do anything about it, we're going to see a very early Tracer pick again on the side of Method. Whoa. It works really well, and why would you change that? Bold claim from Kalidor. Oh, yeah, really, yeah. Dropping aggressive strats for draft. I mean, you got to calm down over there, Kalidor. You know, I'm known for my bold claims, and he brought me into a lot of hairy situations, but usually I get out of them. Was that a free can line? Did you just drop a free can line on us? <laughs> it was a perfect time to do so. Kudos to you. I'm trying hard. I'm going to buy you some Miracle Grow to make you happy. Hey, you're drawing lions. I drop lions. It's like the same thing. Uh... <laughs> 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 okay, we need to stop this. This is getting really bad. Leftovers thinking about their ban here. Abather, Genji, they do have first pick. So while we mentioned that Tracer could be an option for Method, if Leftovers leave it open, Leftovers also have the option themselves to run some Tracer. We'll see if they want to go down that route. The method has played this once as a first pick, once as a second pick. We've seen them with Abathur bans. Usually they ban out Abathur if they're in the first pick slot. Right now it seems that the Leftovers themselves are pretty worried about it, but I'm pretty sure if they ban something out here, there's a very good chance that Method bans out Abathur themselves. Of course, playing mind games like this is not always a successful strategy, but I feel Leftovers could go for it right now. They themselves have played the map three times, and they banned Abatha twice, and they banned Hanzo once. And they actually change it up. They go for their Haka, so now I would expect Method to ban out Abatha. Keep it away from Arcaner, and then also put Method in the spot to ban the Abbey. There it is. Leftovers, show your hand. Do you take the Tracer? No, they pick up Blaze instead. Yeah, Blaze very early. Don't mind that too much, but again, the chances of Method picking Tracer are pretty strong here. But I really like that they went into the mind game there at the beginning. They were thinking about an Abathur ban, and they figured, hey, they are going to ban it out. We don't have to. We can ban something else. So they ban, they target the top lane, they ban the Haka, they get the, uh, rid of the global, they pick Blaze first. They have the stronger, or very likely to have the stronger solo lane. But of course, at the same time, they know that the inevitable is going to happen, and that's Tracer and Malfurion on the side of the opponent. You give up Tracer and Malfurion. Hopefully, they'll be able to handle that. Uther and Greymane coming in here for Leftover. Sticking with their Greymane, they enjoy him. Not too shabby, but at least now they have a top lane that can be pretty dominant. And they also have a four-man that they've already set a good foundation for between Uther and Greymane. They'll need to main tank a little bit later on here. Uh, but still, Leftovers setting themselves up. I just worry about them controlling this Tracer that has been dominant in every match that we've seen it in from Swimpy. But to be fair, they did a really good job last game with it. So they lost the game, but they stayed even and even ahead for the longest time. And you could really tell that it was much harder for Shrimpy to have the same impact that he did in previous games last weekend, but also now today. But for the me... The last fight changed all that up, but still, they are getting better dealing with the situation. And I feel a lot of it comes down to them also running Greymane again, especially with Uther now. I feel like some of their strength of being able to control the early game on Dragonshire, though, was that it's harder to be effective as Tracer because there's less face until you open up the fort and the turrets, and that's when we started to see Tracer excel. I feel like in Towers of Doom, especially between the middle and the bottom lane, there's so much more room for Twimpy to be annoying, and he even go for aggressive ganks in the top side. So I feel like, even though we saw Leftovers control it well on Dragonshire, I think it'll be more difficult going into Towers of Doom. No, I, I agree with that. Shrimpy is fantastic on the hero. It's one of the reasons why I have no problem with them going into early tracers every single time. It's super dominant as a strategy in Europe, yep. and by them more so than other teams even. So them completely one-tricking on the tracer, Malfurion, is no issue as long as it works. I just feel that Leftovers have shown they that they are capable of dealing with it. It's still dangerous, and yep. you still have to be on top of your game to, to work with it. But I think they have... They have some tools now. You have Uther for the stun, you have also Greymane that can go for the throw, put the pressure on. So I, I think 
if you don't ban Tracer out, this is as good as it gets in terms of like how do you deal with it. Well, Tyrion Murden comes in, so a strong front line, a mobile front line here for Method. Murden being able to force fights, love him around Zappers, but Tyrion also later on just being annoying with being able to drop those shields and diving forward with the Tracer. So Method feeling great in that regard. Will we see them go full Tracer only? That is a question here. Will we get more melees in the front line like we've been seeing from other compositions, or do you think we'll get more damage later? I think they sh still need a bit more damage. Yeah. If they had anyone else who can deliver on the front line with the punch, then maybe. But right now, I think a bit more damage on there. And for Nick in particular, I don't mm. see him on another melee here. Uh, for Leftovers, uh, I still would like to see ETC again. I really think that the impact that Lauber had on the, in the last game with ETC was pretty huge. The Mosh Pits were absolutely on point and delivered most of the kills. Got caught once or twice where he went into a bush and face check a bit too hard when he was alone. But I love that they're picking up ETC again. I really like that. And we have Li Ming now on there. And so there's also like the potential to again get resets. So with a combo with Li Ming and Greyman, it's something they played on the first map that they played on Braxis. So now they try to utilize the same combo. And uh, I like it. Final pick coming in from Method. What are you going to do here? It's going to be Lenara. I haven't seen her in a bit here. But Lenara makes sense with the Tracer composition. You get the dive set up with the Tyrael and the Tracer, allowing for her to chase targets. But Lenara's rule is to soften up your opponents and allow Tracer to get the fights that she wants. Yes. And Lenara is also starting to get played a lot more in Europe. Over the entire duration of 2018, 11 games played, 7 wins and 4 losses. But an Assassin is actually pretty good. We don't have the massive sample size with her just yet, mm -hmm. but that's a very, very good win ratio for a damage dealer. So she is becoming more and more powerful now, again, specifically because the double supports are kind of out of the meta at this point, so Lunara is starting started to be picked up. Yeah, she's very similar to Cassia, where if the draft really unfolds for her, she's great for a fourth or fifth pickup in your team composition, unless you're Beg for Mercy, by the way, who plays Lenara every single day for the rest of his life. But again, you want to soften people up, and you want to make sure you have kill potential. Lenara, even with a leaping strike, can get kills here and there, but someone else that can secure those kills, a Genji, a Tracer, even an Illidan, can be really beneficial for your team. Yeah. And just to give you a bit of a global picture again, Lunara played in Europe, as I said, 11 times. It's going to be their 12th game. And outside of that, she hasn't even been played in Korea. Like, not at all, not a single game. And in North America, we've seen her twice, one loss and one win. So another good example that we have, depending on the region, some heroes are uh, just being played more. And for Europe, two of the main heroes in that case are Gul'dan, who has a much higher play rate in Europe than he has in the other regions, and Lunara even more so. All right, let's go into it here. Game number three. Method is up at two to zero, but Leftovers have done their best to hang around. Can they get a win? Or will we see them fall out here on today? The Leftovers are down 0-2 in the series. This is a chance for them to start a comeback. We have them to the left of Towers of Doom with Potiboss on Blaze, Black Kidney on Greymane, DAB on Liming, Lauba on ETC and Linked. On, Uther. on the right side in the red, Method. Gonna have Schwimpy playing Tracer, Arcane on Tyrio, a thorough emerge in Nick on Lunara, and Cursed playing Malfurion. Now one of the main reasons, of course, that Lunara in this setup is once again quite powerful is that she goes up against Uther, and that has been one of those little rivalries that we've seen for a long time where Uther just has with this kid, some trouble dealing with Lunara's overtime damage. And as Trixer already explained a bit earlier, it's also nice that Lunara can soften the targets up and then Shrimpy has opportunities to go in deep and try and get a kill before he moves back out. So a lot of synergy on Method's draft here and trying to counteract certain weaknesses in what the Leftovers bring to the map. But Leftovers, they have their strong top lane. They have also the Greymin and Liming combination that allows them a similar process with Poke on Liming's side, also the Cocktail, of course, and then Greymin with a potential go for the Throat later, trying to take down either Lunara or Tracer when they fall below in hit points. Yeah, you saw there, Method didn't actually try to force a fight in the middle lane. A little bit of harassment here and there, but typically, hang on, as we watch Pony Boss take it and engage here, Jet Propulsion coming out to get it for escape. Arcaner blocks it, but he's able to sustain himself. One of the things about a Lenara is that 7, 13, and 16 are your power spikes. Really important moment. 7, because you get Splinter Spear, which allows for you to split your spear up after dropping in your uh, 
Q. Yes, your Q. I haven't played in harm forever. You drop that down there, and you're able to get three auto attacks to proc, and you are able to soften up opponents, as I was mentioning. And then 13 is your power spike, because you have defensive and offensive capabilities that Kaldor likes to talk about a lot, especially the uh, major one that allows you to do extra damage. Unfair advantage. Yeah, exactly. Unfair advantage. Or if you're afraid of the pulse bomb, of course, you can go into the greater spell shield. There's a lot of stuff that you can do around 13 where that allows you to just react to what your opponent is using. Exactly. I mean, at this point, we already have to the top lane, still ETC, uh, uh, sorry, it's still Blaze doing his thing, and down here at the bottom of the map, the two focus points really become the camps now, where we have Greymane already starting to head to the left side. And for Method, it's now a question. Do they try and engage and try to contest it, or do they take their own? But instead, they're trying to find a kill in the middle, and Podiboss is already in trouble, but able to move away with Blaze once again as he rotates between lanes to catch the experience. That Pyromania and that sustain, just a little bit too much, keeping Blaze alive. And honestly, Method would have had a hard time forcing that engagement unless a Pulse Bomb was up and available, and Tracer had one, but they were near the middle of the map, so they'd go ahead and allow Leftovers to control those sappers, and they'll defend as best they can. The problem with the defense is now Leftovers, if they want, they can invade and try to force a fight. Yeah, and Lauba is already waiting for an opportunity Ooh. to do exactly that. Nick eats the entire Liming combo, DAB with a great shot here. Good opportunity, but ETC was a bit too far out. Now uses the power slide to go stay for Ethereum. And Ethereum nearly falling up, barely getting out. One more hit would have taken him out already. So great aggression from left over us once again. I love that they are trying to do that today. That they're always forcing the fights. They've started this on the first map on Braxis, continued throughout Dragonshire, and they just become more and more discipline from team fight to team fight and week to week. A good opening here for Leftovers too, forcing five members of Method to come down to defend that area. Also, the turret's still falling too, with the sappers not getting cleaned up. Gives them an experience lead. They're at five and three quarters to the five and a quarter of Method. Now, some peeling happening here for Method, hoping to control these four man as Arcaner grabs the top right altar. I really like the aggression that we are seeing coming out of ETC in particular, and for for Ethereum, it's a little bit risky. Every single time when he wants to jump out and ETC is close by, you can get interrupted, and then, of course, that puts you in a very awkward position. Method has now lost two of the first three altars that were spawning on the map. We're seeing leftovers with 36 per points on their own core. And again, a good start for Leftovers here. Doing well, and Shrimpy still, of course, making these rotations happen and looking for potential kills, but we haven't seen a single one yet in this game on either side. Turrets being traded out here for Method, trying to make sure that they stay near and experience, even trying to grab a lead here with the second turn being grabbed. Leftovers is grouped up pretty heavily here in the middle, but Murden is sharking around, keeping an eye on them, which allows for Lenara, who has finally hit that level 7, to push in the bottom lane. It, Lauba is really doing a good job. Ethereum the entire time is trying to find flanks, some potential where he can be aggressive, where he can allow options for his team to get a kill. But Lauba is always anchoring the team. Right now, on the other hand, we have a quick engage against DAB, but a very good cleanse coming out from Uther, making sure that everybody can move away. Linked himself is in trouble, and so is Lauba, but a quick heal saves him. Ethero trying to jump in, but doesn't have the cooldown on the Stormbolt. So as Method collapses onto leftovers in the mid lane, everybody on the side of the blue team is still able to disengage and Blaze holding the top lane. He was the one missing in that battle. Still, Li Ming just barely being out of position just shows how quickly you can get a kill if you're able to land that route. A cleanse had to come out, so my Uther was in trouble. Leftovers, you gotta make sure they're a little bit careful in that regard. And Thuru in a spot here to check out the sappers that are being grabbed, and this allows for his teammates to rotate over and maybe force a fight. He has a Stormbolt available, they decide against it, and instead just clear up the bottom lane and pick up Li Ming. Well done, find a kill there. Trying to go for the camp, not getting that done, but then they see an opportunity to take Li Ming out, and that it's taken immediately. It's crazy how quick they do that too. I didn't even consider the pickup on Leeming on the bottom and they instantly jumped on her the moment she's near a turret. Yeah, when the lockdown was there, it was just perfect for them. The exchange as the second altar phase is in the game, so top left, top right are both taken. We oftentimes see that, that both teams are just willing to give up one. They go for an even trade and then start to home in a level 10 instead, get the experience. And that's something that Method does by picking the towers at the bot lane apart. So already taking the first one, but we have the engage against Nick, and he gets stunned twice. Nice move by Lauber. Puts him into the perfect spot for Uther to follow it up with a quick stun, and DAB says thank you very much, goes in and together with Uther takes her down. Job well done, one kill on each side, and leftovers showing that they are 
that Method is not the only team that can go in for a quick kill. Yeah, that was a bait that heavily backfired there. They were trying to have Lenaron get caught by something, or at least have the idea of Lava coming in for a power slide, and then a Thorough jumps over and gets a Storm Bolt, and they turn around the kill. Sadly, that's not how it panned off. Leftovers grabbing three folks, jump immediately on Lenara and pick her off, getting the kill. Still, 10 right around the corner for both of our teams, though. Shouldn't be too big of a deal, especially with Ultra spawning soon. Yeah, 10 is in now, at least four leftovers. Method will be able to get the Aerog abilities as well, and I highly doubt that Lauba can close the distance fast enough to make something happen with it. Schwimby is baiting him a bit here and just waiting to dash away once more. But Lauba is not using the cooldown yet. The tens are in, go for the throat as expected, of course. Divine Shield Mosh Pit already picked up. And also no surprises when we're looking at Method. We have, again, Sanctification taken for Tyrael and the Thornwood Mines on the side of Lunara just to poke from a distance and get some extra damage against Uthain. Yep, that still aids the idea of just trying to get that poke, as you mentioned. Staying from afar with Lunara, keeping her nice and safe. If Greyman or Leeming are to get aggressive in any way, shape, or form, they'll have to kite through the Murden and the Tyrael, which will make it a bit difficult for them. So Method now poises and sets up around the middle altar. Only one standing here for it the teams to grab. Leftover gets caught as Stormbolt comes in from a throw and hits Lobber. Yeah, and we still have Poti Boss on Blaze split from the rest of the team. So Method was able to drive a wedge between Leftovers and that is a bit of a problem for them right now, but there's still a lot of poke potential that Leftovers have where they can make it difficult for Method to capitalize on it. Poti Boss is now in, trying to go to Jet Propulsion going against Shrimpy and Shrimpy barely gets out. Lauber looking for an opportunity to slide in and maybe drop that mosh pit. As we are seeing more and more leftovers taking the space around the altar, but Ethereum is contesting it. A bit of damage against Nick, as we already have the shields of Tyrael coming out once again. Here comes the bunker being played right away. Sanctification on the ground as they're trying to go for it. The roots are also being used by Malfurion. They move in, the Divine Shield is used, and Ethereum himself finds him in trouble, trying to move away here. Arcana jumping into the back once more, but this is an opportunity for Lauber, and he takes it immediately. They're trying to go for Tyrael, and he is incredibly low, as we have the silence coming out of Malfurion. A long team fight here for Method, starting to finally break their opponents down. Uther starting to struggle here as Swimpy and Nick step forward, busting out the damage. No warrior unable to finally get that stun. Finally, Uther gets it, but Swimpy getting the last second heal from Curse and will be able to survive, and Greymane falls. Lobber's next. Great Stormbolt from Ethereum. Now the body blocks against ETC. They get the double kill, and now an easy altar, of course, for them to take. They find themselves down in points on the core, and they will equalize that score quite easily. But I love the attempt to go for a Tracer. That was nearly a kill. At that point, we saw Greyman under a lot of trouble, and he already realized, well, I'm most likely going to fall here. So turning around, trying to go for a counter kill against Tracer was perfect. But that was something that Curse was already waiting for. Curse was immediately there, helping out Tracer. Shouldn't be moving back. Now we're having a lead in experience for Method. They're moving in again. DAB gets the damage pushed on him, but not of any consequence just yet, as we have more and more experience gathered also by the leftovers to the top lane, where we see Blaze again pushing the waves in. One sapper does make it through. Method taking their other stack of sappers as well. Leftovers should be able to defend that pretty easily with Greyman and ETC manning the front charge, but check out the middle lane. Tracer chasing down Pody Boss here. Pody Boss gets blocked on the... Jet Propulsion, he's gonna drop his bunker just to escape and he'll be just fine. Yeah, a short cooldown of course on the bunker, so that should be okay for the next altars. And it's a double altar phase that comes up next. Both of them at the bottom of the map. And 13, ready for our method, will soon be there for leftovers as well. Ha, <laughs> should be. It's always there. Always dancing in the background. And this is really, as we said before, something that allows also more space for Lunara. Cleanse comes out again, so that's on cooldown now. Good attempt by Method to nail Lauber to the ground and then drop him here. Blaze still at the top as both teams have level 13 talents. A thorough control in this chunk here. Making sure to sit in the front line. If Power Side comes through, Shunky will be able to punish quickly as well as curse him with a root to section off those two. Leftovers gathers all five of their teammates and they are forcing a engage soon. Will they go for the long route around the bottom left corner or will they come from the top down? They decide to set up a sandwich maneuver, actually. Yeah. Blaze and Ming. They're flanking around, but not with everybody. Tracer is moving to the bottom altar. Middle is not channeled yet. Tracer could be interrupted, and Uther is moving in to do exactly that, as we have the kitten also waiting around. Quest completed for Muradin, just in time for the team fight that is going to happen here now. 
poke, poke, poke. That's the name of the game. Nick gets hit with a power slide, though, into a mosh pit. Here's a Divine Shield as well. Will Lenar be able to get out? The Twilight Dream does connect, and we'll have Lenar back up thanks to the sanctification. Yeah, the Divine Shield came too late. Greymane is down. Bunker is already on the ground now as they are moving in once again. Power slide comes through. Lauba in trouble. Muradin jumps after him, and that's the kill as we see Shrimpy going in for the seconds. We have ETC down. Greymane as well. Great play here from Method and the Divine Shield of Uther just out too late to continue the mosh pit. Sanctification, Josh, allowing for Lenar to kite backwards, staying alive, yep. last second heals. Method grabs both altars, and that'll be a barrage of shots. Total of eight coming forward, 28 to 20, and they step forward and take sappers. That power spike we were talking about, the unfair advantage, coming in line now for Lenar. Deadly win effective. Yeah, fight again. And actually, yeah. The, mo the Divine Shield came in time, my bad. I actually thought that it went a second too late, but it cancelled out the Twilight Dream. Sanctification was the one that allowed Lunara to get away here. Great layer of ults there from both of our teams. Yeah. Method getting the upper hand, though. Apologies to Linked. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be like, thank you so much, Kaldor. I think you would be a little bit more happy if they could take the game. <laughs> 20 against 28 points on... In experience, actually not too far behind. Experience-wise, they are fine here. They are just still slightly behind again their opponent. It's really just the points on the core, which is not really the worst thing yet, so it, it's still fine. We don't have Lauba with a completed quest talent on one yet. The proc rock would really help them against the Nara's damage. Anything at this point that helps you to mitigate some of the AoE damage and the damage over time would be helpful. So once Lauba completes that, that is going to change things up for them. Around 16, I can definitely see them have different fights here. But at this point, Lauba is again in trouble, needs the Divine Shield, and Linked is ready to help him out here. That would have been a kill against ETC. It's a heads-up play by Uther. Yeah, unfortunate for him. He went for a Power Slide to get away, but Athura was able to land the Storm Bolt and stop him from getting the escape. So the Divine Shield had to be used just to keep him alive. And here's where that's unfortunate. Three altars spawning, meaning that Divine Shield will not be available for that Mosh Pit combo we've seen earlier. Yeah, they need to make sure they get at least one. As long as they get one of the altars, they should be okay here. They are very likely going to lose two. But as long as they focus on the top left, they should be able to claim one. They will fall farther behind in points in the core. But they should then be in a position where around level 16 they can fight. Probably also with a completed proc rock on uh, the side of ETC. So here's the exchange. Shots fired. And that, of course, puts now leftovers down to 12 points on the core, 24 for Method. Method likely to hit 16 a little bit earlier than leftovers does, but both of the teams are still insanely close in experience. But Method has a chance here to pull pretty far ahead with taking up the Bell Tower towards the south. Leftovers mirrors it back with a Sappers grab in the top lane, but Tyrion should be able to slow that down slightly. And Nick and crew will be able to put a little bit of damage on that Bell Tower. They don't have to grab it right away, though. They can grab it later on in case they want to get an anchor point for the next altar. Yeah, I'm more worried about the uh, fact that they are taking the camp now because that needs to have an immediate reaction to the bot lane. You're already so far behind when it comes in points in the core. They are 12 behind right now, which in itself is not really the worst thing yet, but they need a th right. Th they can't afford to lose more. 12 is already pretty low. If you lose a team fight and your opponent gets another double altar and gets a boss, that's potentially 12 points. So uh, right now they need to make something happen here. 16 versus 16. Brock Rock is not completed yet, but even without it, they need to see if they can maybe get a kill here. Bunker is already used. That's a nice body block attempt here as well to cut them off slightly. But now the camps are starting to pull through. And Lauba has just used his face melt. Good damage by DAB, making sure that they're keeping them close. Taking one down. One might go through, and yes, indeed it does. Lauba barely wow. surviving against the bomb as we just see the altar spawning towards the bottom of the map. Just barely living, but the issue is the altar, as you mentioned, spawning towards the bottom of the map. There's no major way for leftovers to get in here and stop this. They may have to actually think about giving this up here, taking the bell tower instead and trying to get control of the map. They're just running out of core points. Two went actually through. It wasn't only one. They got two of the camps too. So right at this point, you have to force the fight. They're looking for it. Body boss comes in. A little bit of harassment here, too. Still has that jet propulsion. He goes for it, completely whiffs it. Yeah, but they go for Lunara, Ooh. and that's the kill before Arcana is there. That is perfect for the leftovers. This is the fight that they were hoping for, and they're getting it. Nice combo coming out, hitting Shrimpy as well as he tries to dash away. That's the mosh pit that they needed, and they go in immediately. Murden is down, has no opportunity. Tyrion is also killed, a triple kill, as the leftovers are all of a sudden starting to punish Method and slapping them around at the bottom of the map. While Furion is dead in the waters, Shrimpy trying to get a counter kill. Jet propulsion. They could get the kill here. They do. It's a team wipe. Leftovers take five 
heroes, and now they have all the time in the world to play, reclaim Bell Tower. Lauber gets the engage over here on the right side, and they immediately kill off Nick, getting the reset straight in for Leeming. Lauber's waiting for his power slide. They're ready. They're dancing in the bunker. They're ready to go. And the moment he pops out of here, he goes straight in for a power slide, slams the mosh pit. Here's the Divine Shield. Kirsten wants to stop it with a Twilight Dream, but he's not there in time. Two instant reset for Li Ming, and they eventually make it a quad into all five members following for Method. Really well played here. Leftovers with the early kill against Lunara. They get the perfect flank, and Tyrell isn't there yet. So now they get the shots. One altar is all they got, but they also reclaimed the bell tower. And the more important part, they find themselves significantly ahead in experience. So at this point for them, it's reaching 21st and fighting with the advantage. Utilize the advantage as well as you can and also try and, of course, reclaim the bell tower at the bot lane, towards the bottom right. But they have a bit of an opportunity. They already look to see if they can maybe make a play around boss, even just going for a bait. But no, they still see heroes at the bot lane, so they try to sneak the boss, and they will definitely succeed with that. That's one of the best ways to continue your comeback if you're going to make one. Take the boss off the field. Prevent four more points from coming your way. That way you can focus on pure map control. And the way they set this up, they grab those sappers, as you were mentioning, for Ladara head ahead bottom and defend it. The method has to be careful. Method is still ahead over, like, in experience, they're still ahead. 18 and a half versus 19. But now they lose the top bell tower and the 20. Once 20 is in, leftovers need to use the time window. Take camps, take a bell tower, be aggressive in a team fight, try and take your objective, but they need to do something. The advantage that Method has, those six extra points on the core, that's not a lot. Leftovers are back at 20. Method, see some experience on the bottom, thinking about grabbing it. They have to be careful, though. This timing is perfect for them. Yeah. For Half leftovers. a minute, Leftovers is going to have 20, and Method m will most likely have to give up both. They're sending one back. They know they have to defend the top. They have Tyrell and Tracer. They should just take this bell tower at the bottom right now. Aggressively move to 20, get the bell tower at the bottom right. 20 is here. Now claim the bell tower. Top is most likely going to be lost. Uh, actually, Tracer and Tyrell might not clean it out in time. They could start both of the channels and get 12 shots in. And that'll put them in the lead. Yeah, exactly. And that would put them in an insanely good position. They get it through, and yes, both are taken just before the bottom bell tower falls. So now that's 12 shots fired, and we have leftovers ahead. 10 points on their core against the four that we have on method. A boss, camps, or just another altar and the game's over. But Method will now reclaim their own 20. This could go into a fourth game. This could be the first map that left always win. They have it. This is this is the best opportunity that they had so far in HTC, or one of the best, to get a map win. So right now, let's see how they handle the situation as they are heading into Storm Talents versus Storm Talents. Both teams are now on 20. They're in the driver's seat. But here's the issue. Tracer's about to get, get stuffed here at level 20. Meaning that if anyone is not careful, instant damage coming in, and Schwimpy will be able to clear them up. Leeming has to be careful. Greymane has to be careful as well. And Link will have to be on point. Blaze pushed out the mid lane. Mid lane bell tower is under a lot of pressure, and that's why we have two heroes reacting to it and trying to ensure that he doesn't fall. That would be a nightmare for Method. Method is dancing around, but this could be decided by just one quick kill at any point. There's the camp coming in. Now keep in mind, even if all three move through, it would not end the game. It would put Method down to one point on the core, but uh, right now, leftovers are more so hoping to maybe even get a kill. And they try to get time for Blaze to grab the middle bell tower, and that's exactly what he does. And now we have the altar spawning, and it's at the bot lane, and Method has no retreat path. They have to find a kill here, or they Blaze. have to come in and contest. Look how, look how careful he plays safe. Yep. He's going all the way to the left giving no opportunity to Method to sneak in. But now Leftovers move, sorry, Method moves aggressively into the middle, try to still put a wedge between the two parts of the team. It's time to do or die here. Body Blast comes in from the side. They find Nick. They jump right on top of him. He gets both down Nick is quickly. Down. He's fallen. Nick He's is fallen. down. And there's the Mosh Pit. They're going in for it again. The bunker's already on the ground as we're seeing Shrimpy moving away. And it's a 5 versus 4 in Leftovers' favor. They're going for Ethereum. They're trying to get him. The Avatar's already popped as we see Bleak Kidney in the back line. Trying to zone them out. Down goes Muradin. They're going for Kirsten. They take him down. The Sanctification on the ground. It doesn't matter. They don't care. They go for Arcana again. And Tyrael is blown to pieces. The altar is on the map. We have six claimed, six Bell Towers by Leftovers. This is game. Method is down to four points on the core. And the left overs win their first game in HTC 2018 by Lauber claiming the altar at the bot lane. The shots are fired and we are going to see a fourth game. 
leftover show that here in HCC Europe, you 